This video shows a process for modeling the kinematic action of a six-bar mechanism with Autodesk 3D Studio Max version 2014. A simple model of a portion of an excavator will be used to show the steps of the rigging process. Here we see uh, our final goal, the animation of the uh, bucket in the ex on this portion of an excavator. Here's a detailed closer view of the mechanism. Here are the components of the excavator. It's uh, a 3D model imported from AutoCAD and care has been taken to carefully position the pivot point for each component. The main arm, the end arm, you can see where its pivot point is, uh, the bucket, a couple of links here, uh, inner cylinder and an outer cylinder. They'll be lined up during the process of setting up the uh, kinematics for this model. Primarily a 2D problem, so we'll work here in the front view. First thing I want to do is zoom into this area and create some bones to represent, to help me with the kinematics. So we're going to turn on my optic snap and make sure pivot is selected. And I'll add a bone from the center of that pivot to the center of this pivot and there's nothing to snap to here so I can either click and eyeball it like that or what I could do is uh, take this circle and I'm sorry take this circle and move it so that it lines up with the pivot hole there so I'll have a pivot point to snap to so that gives me a pretty good location right there so let's go back and reconstruct the bones I'm going to create a bone snapping with uh, object snap pivot from this point to the center of that to the center of this circle. Right click when you're done. I now want to link this link which I'll call link A to that first bone. This link which is link B I'm going to link to the second bone. And let's uh, take a look now and we'll see that if I were to move this bone here Move it around. Oops, Control Z. Move this bone here. You can see that the link is associated with it. So now what we'd like to do is add a IK solver. We'll use an HI solver, history independent solver. And the first thing I want to do is select the root bone here. Animation, IK solvers, HI solver, and I'll get the end bone at that location. So that allows me now to move the IK chain and you can see those two links follow. All right. So let's put that back into that position. Now what I'd like to do is uh, associate the rotation of the bucket with the location of that IK solver. So what I want to do is create a dummy object. We'll go here to our helpers dummy object and I'll just put the dummy object out there for now and we'll move it into the correct location. So I'm going to snap again to the pivot point. So that's my dummy and I want to link this dummy to the bucket. And I want to link the IK solver. I'm going to select that. Let's select the IK solver and I want to link that to the dummy. So now when I rotate the bucket, we have our essentially our four bar linkage all tied together very nice and neat like that. All right. So now what I'll do is we got to worry about the cylinder up here, a slider mechanism. So what we're going to do is a little something different here. We're going to select the inner cylinder and uh, we'll notice that in the local coordinate system, the y-axis, green being y, is in the direction of the cylinder. And what I'd like to do is associate a look at constraint. So I'm going again to animation constraints, uh, look at constraint, and I'm going to look at the outer cylinder. So it's pointing in the direction of the pivot point for the outer cylinder. We don't see it correctly oriented here, so what we need to do is come over to our menu and change the select look at axis. Let's try Y. Well, that looks pretty good. 
We could also flip it if it wasn't going in the right direction. So we're all set on that. So now let's do the same thing in the top cylinder, the outer cylinder. We're going to select that, go to our animation, constraints, look at, and I'm going to look at the inner cylinder. Well, you can see that it won't accept the inner cylinder because the inner cylinder is pointing to the outer cylinder, which cannot point back to the inner cylinder. That would be a circular reference. So what I'm going to do instead is that the pivot point for this link B is in the same location as the pivot point for the inner cylinder. So I'll we'll point to that instead. And let's change uh, our look at axis to Y and flip it around. And we can see now that they point to each other. So now I should be able to take my bucket and do a rotation. And oops, oop, I haven't linked the inner cylinder yet to the uh, link B. So I'm going to take that and link it to link B. And that should be all set there. So now we can do the rotation of our bucket. Let's see if that works. And that has some nice six bar linkage representation. Okay, that looks pretty good. So now what we'd like to do is um, associate this thing so that when I rotate this main arm, everything goes along with it. As you can see, that's independent at this point. So what I'm going to do is come into the top portion of the outer cylinder. And again, use my object linking, I'm going to grab the outer cylinder and associate it with that arm. All right, so that'll go along with that. In this case here, what I'd like to do is link the bone to the arm. So we've got the link selected. Let's grab the bone and I want to link that to the arm. Now as soon as I do that, you can see it threw off the orientation of all these components. So let's undo that and what I have to do now instead is come over and select that main arm here. I'm going to select the arm. Let's select the arm and come over to my hierarchy tab and come down here it says adjust transform um, tr reset and I want to do a click the transform reset for that arm so now when I go and do a link of this bone to the arm it keeps its orientation and that looks pretty good alright last thing I want to do is link the bucket to the arm as well alright so now we can see how that all works. So now I should be able to come up here and I should be able to pivot and all those components go along with it and I should still be able to manipulate the bucket as well. All right, so we can see that that's working pretty well. There's one last thing I want to check before we're finished. What happens when I rotate the mechanism out of plane? So when I twist the entire arm like this, we look at this and we see the clevis pin here is rotated within its location, which we don't want. So let's bring that back. And what I'd like to do is take the clevis pin, go to my motion tab, here under select up node, we want to not tie it to the world, but tie it to the arm that it stays fixed with. We we'll also want to do that to the inner cylinder as well. So now I'll select that, uncheck world, and check the up node as being that end arm. So now when we rotate this about out of plane, we can see that those joints stay with the right orientation. They don't rotate about its axis. So that pretty much does it. We're ready to now keyframe and finish the animation. Thank you.